We celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You know, as we go through life, let's be honest, we all have doubts. We doubt about a whole lot of things. So as we begin, let's kind of think about how we handle life when doubts keep coming at us time and time and time again. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us for the sin we have committed. Bring each one of us home to everlasting life. Amen. We glorify God as we pray. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest. And on earth, we be people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, the Father, amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, when the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks, thanks to the Lord for the use of the people's homes everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for the use of the people's everlasting. A reading from the letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth, the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, 
so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered him and said, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, everyone. So, this gospel is probably one of my all-time favorite gospels. It's really because of that one line in there that says about that we are blessed because we believe, because we have not seen. We have doubts, sure we do. That's what this gospel is all about, those doubts, those fears that Thomas had. But Jesus, if you read into the story, when Jesus came that second week, he didn't go to Peter, he didn't go to James, he didn't go to John. He came right to Thomas and didn't want him to unbelieve. He wanted him to believe. He showed him the signs, he showed him his hands, he showed him his side. I think that's what the Lord wants of us. He doesn't want us to unbelieve. He doesn't want our doubts and our fears to get in the way of our faith. He comes right to us. We just have to be open to that. I think that's what the story is all about. I have a little story I'd like to share with you. There was this family, a mother, a little boy who was about maybe six or seven years old, and then a baby girl who went shopping in one of those big warehouse stores. So they went shopping, they went through, they were filling their cart. All of a sudden, the boy wanted these fruit snacks. So he went over to the fruit snacks and said to his mom, I'm interested in some fruit snacks. He turned around and his mother was gone. He was panic stricken, he didn't know what to do. So he was kind of crying a little bit, thinking about yelling for his mom, calling her out, didn't find her, didn't see her. People were walking by, going by, didn't, didn't give him the time of the day. So he finally he decided, he said, I'm not gonna cry anymore, I'm gonna go look for her. Looked down a few of the aisles, couldn't find her. Finally found a man on, with the blue vest on, kind of putting canned goods on, on the shelves. So he went up to the man, he had tears in his eyes and said, that he couldn't find his mother. He was worried that she left him there. Or he said to the man, he said, I'm worried she left me, or else maybe she got kidnapped by aliens. But, you know, that wasn't too realistic. But the man said, you know, has your mother ever left you before? And he said, no. Well, maybe we need to go look for your mom. So they looked around and couldn't find her. So finally they found another worker in the store. This man had a radio on, so they radioed him. Aisle 10, there's a lost boy. When all of a sudden, around the corner came his mom with his baby sister in the cart, and she said to him, you know, he went, ran up to her. She said, where have you been? He said, I went for fruit snacks. I thought you abandoned me. He had his doubts. He had his fears. All these things crept into his mind. She said, I called you. I had to change your sister. We went to the restroom, and then you weren't there. I was panicky. I was looking for you. So they were looking for each other. But while that boy couldn't find his mother, he had a lot of doubts, he had a lot of anxiety, he had a lot of fears. I think, you know, we can all relate to that story. As we go through life, there are many times when we have doubts, many times when we have fears and anxieties. And I think what we need to do is think about Jesus. Think about Jesus coming to us to get rid of those doubts, those fears. We have our faith. You know, if anything was automatic, if, if you know something is a certainty, you don't need any faith. But we, we know that God has risen from the dead. We have to have a little bit of faith. We know that Jesus unlocked the gates of heaven for us. 
So you know, this Sunday is that Doubting Thomas story. And maybe Thomas gets kind of a bad rap because the one big story in the Gospel about Thomas is he's a doubter. But he went on to do many great things after Jesus showed him his nail prints, his hands aside. Thomas believed and then preached that Jesus was our Lord, our Savior. He died for our sins. He died for us. He loves us. And I think today is also Divine Mercy Sunday. You know, I talk about mercy a lot, and I think that's what God wants us to think about, his mercy, his love, and his forgiveness, and get us beyond our doubts and our fears and our faults. So that's what this weekend is about. Not about doubting Thomas, but it's about all of us with our doubts and our fears and our faults, that we need to look towards Jesus to get beyond those. God bless and stay safe, my brothers and sisters. Let us renew our baptismal promises, I respond, and I do. I ask Father President Jimmy Jack Satan. I do. I do. And all his works. I do. And all his empty promises. I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, whose only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, but rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church? Unity of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We now offer these petitions. For the Catholic Church on this Divine Mercy Sunday, may it rededicate itself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, may it grow in holiness during this Easter season and love one another with charity and forgiveness. So let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in confusion, ignorance, skepticism, or doubt, like Thomas the Apostle, may they be filled with the truth and the light of the risen Christ. So let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to face the trials and difficulties of life with the confidence and certainty that comes from the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died during this Easter season, may they come to share in Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we spread to give you, which earth has given and human hands have made, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God of forever. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we this wine to give you, food of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God of forever. Friends, let's pray that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May we accept the sacrifice at our hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of God's whole church. Accept the Lord the offerings of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that we do by confession of your name and by baptism, we may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Father, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. So once again, we join our loved ones in heaven as we pray this hymn of an ending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by, sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. So the way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop. Remember Ronald Loretta and Walter Rosengrant, Elizabeth and John Sable, Michael and Monica Novak, and Connie Janone, Gloria Palapic, Matthew Chapolis, Frank Colella, whom we have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection for all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await with joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. And with the Spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed all those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God's blessing continue to guide this journey, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.